I have unique views on a lot of these things. Um, I think there are some very specific things that we need to recognize as patterns. The first is that inevitably all of these shooters, even the ones we claim are pseudo left wing or attack someone right wing or do any of those things, uh, all of their rhetoric is reactionary. Their targets are reactionary. Their targets are very right wing. There's no exceptions to this. Uh, you may find people who do extreme things uh, against the cops. Their language is still deeply reactionary at, at a base level. When we talk about why a person does a thing and the words that they use and how they use it, um, there is a impetus that we have to, to not necessarily believe them, <laughs> to instead mm. uh, ascribe that they've been fooled, that they're, oh, they're, they just got caught up in an ideology. They just got the words wrong. They just don't understand what they're saying. If they did, they wouldn't have done this thing. And I'm sure my happy liberal self is able to talk people through. And if only they saw the truth, I could talk to them and save them. This mentality and this belief that their words uh, are anything but what they actually are, it also ascribes to them a secondary thing. And that is that they had other options like that there was a choice. One of the great difficulties of the society, specifically in America we live in, that is very unique, uh, is the uh, absolute invasion of how capital rules our lives in a way we don't want to admit. Uh, we live at the precipice of death every day. We're not necessarily maybe aware of it. If you've ever been poor, you've been very aware of it. If you've been poor with children, you're super fucking aware, with, aware of it. Anything we do, Everything we do needs to be done in a way that allows us to not be chased off. It's one of the reasons that uh, 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 the woke crowds or the woke scolds or the idea of being canceled terrifies people so much across the board. And it's because very often if it's done to someone who's poor, it gets us. We know that that's the end of our careers. We might be homeless. We might die. We don't have health insurance. We don't have a welfare state of any semblance. It's silly to say otherwise. Is it, is it the reality? No, but it's something that definitely pervades lives. So as such, we need to be careful about not just what we say, but the excuses we use for the things we believe in. This combined with a second fact, which is uh, the underlying desires and impetuses that people are grown with, the ex lived experiences that ultimately form us and become the things we do, they're not exactly always in line with what we think. They're attracted to large scale power. They're attracted to a level of intensity. They're attracted to uh, other things that they can desire that are able to be connected with. These elements mix together in some very nefarious ways. On the one hand, we have the desire within ourselves to connect with a great deal of things that are exceptionally powerful. Fascism, right wing ideology, fear, terror, these are deeply powerful emotions. They're very easy to connect with at a visceral level. Combine that with rhetoric that is used around these things that isn't tricking them, not at all, but because the society we live in naturally creates these foundations that only dialogue can go in a certain direction, only certain types of thinking are allowed, only certain types of behavior are allowed, you end up in a general trough of meaning generation that ultimately leads people in the direction they're going. Now, that doesn't lead them. I have very unique beliefs in how the unconscious works. Um, it's, it's a lot more to explain here. <laughs> but in all, in all the times that you see children shoot and kill other children, you inevitably see the discussion and the language of them wanting to believe that they're starting a revolution. They're changing the world. They're going to be famous. They are attracted to these large scale things. They talk about them in specific ways. And inevitably they talk about killing all the blacks, the Jews, whatever it is, bringing the white race back, whatever it is. These are all the same. Rage shootings haven't changed since Reagan was in power. There's no mistake that the 1980s was the place this began. This is not something that's been going on for a hundred years in America. This is Reagan. This is where this started. This is going postal. It's the same thing. Rage shootings haven't shifted. Over time, they've taken different forms in terms of rhetoric. The underlying desires ultimately attract the same. And because of that, we're unable to actually attack the central reason that these things get founded in the first place.